Okay, I'll um, I'll start right now. So it's um it's a little rough today. Um, and I'm uh, not being invasive, but I'm only going to be able to be on here for maybe 20, 30 minutes at most. I have an extreme family emergency involving my uh, my son, who some of you people know by the name of Gunfly, and it involves a hospital. So um, I'm waiting for a phone call, so I'm going to do the best I can. Um, so uh, I'm going to obviously let the, the questions come in, but I'm going to hopefully eliminate some of those questions by giving you a good update. And I know one of the, one if not the most important update is in regards to the OTC and the filings. So I think a lot of you know that I had explained where I filed the, OTC, well, I, filed, I filed everything on the end of April. Um, uh, more specifically, I filed the uh, a corporate action with FINRA. And then as I said, I filed with OTC. I have not only filed with OTC, I would uploaded all of the necessary documents I had uh, also received invoices from, from OTC, which was A, $1,000 for the application, and B, $7,000, which are the annual fees to be on the OTC QB. I have paid those fees. They wouldn't have sent me the invoice unless I was approved. On top of that, they'd sent me the necessary documents where they had to do the criminal and everything background checks on myself. All that got passed, and that's the reason I have access to the OTC Upload. I have access. They don't give you access unless you're approved. As I had told quite a few people without calling names, and some of them too many to remember, people were wondering, well, why is, it, why is FINRA up, um, uh, holding back the OTC upload? And I had actually got to the point one day, and I, again, I won't name names, where I actually, I was told by OTC, they will not upload the necessary documents while there is a FINRA corporate action. The corporate action was simply the name change, which I had to prove and the symbol change. So it was ongoing. What FINRA was sending to me, and one day it was only two responses, and the next day they had another 25. And 95%, if not more of those, review uh, questions from FINRA were all to do with 2016, 17, 18, 19 from the previous company and the previous CEOs. I don't have any of that information. I don't have any of those documents. I've done everything to find documents. I've dealt with MNP, the auditors, which were the auditors at that time up until 2016, 17, that I think you can all see on the, on the, on the OTC QB. It tells you right there. And those financials don't exist. So my guess that apparently this guy was a scammer and they've just either deleted, got rid of, whatever. I don't even know who this person was, um, but those documents don't exist to me, including from Andrew Collette, who was the administrator for the court, which is approximately she had it for over a year and a half until I got it. And she had nothing. Everything she had, she gave to me. And all it was is court documents in regards to um, uh, certain debts that put it into the administration. That's it. So it's been hell. Um, finally, literally today is Thursday. So on Tuesday, um, she, the FINRA had sent me another request again. 17 requests. Again, all going back to, like I just explained. I couldn't take it anymore. I called FINRA yesterday. I called, and I'm dealing with a specific person, so I'm not dealing with a different person each time. And I had a brainstorm, and I literally said to her, I, I need a question. I would asked the question. I'm going to tell you in a minute. She said, let me get my supervisor on the phone, which she did. This is FINRA. And I said, what if I retracted my corporate action, name change, symbol change? What would FINRA need from me? The answer is nothing. I said, so then you would say, I would read, so I said, how would that look? What do I need to do? They said, and this is her supervisor on there, you need to send a letter of retraction and then they will retract the, the, the action. <coughs> I sent the letter of retraction yesterday. This morning, I received the confirmation from FINRA that they've accepted the retraction. 
I then sent it to Cameron, who I, again, another relationship I built at OTC. And I'd already, by the way, called him yesterday when I found that out from FINRA that this was happening. And he said, no problem, get me a copy of the letter. I got the letter this morning. I've sent it to Cameron this morning for the OTC, left him a voicemail. I've not talked to him yet. Now, I'm. can you please unlock so I can do what we need to do? And you can upload what I filed on April 26th. I haven't talked to him, but I know that that is, is happening any day now. Hasn't happened today. I can only imagine it's Monday morning, and I guarantee you I'm all over him. But I have now accomplished, embarrassingly enough, because I've seen people in the chat room, which I told you I wasn't going to look at, but I do, um, that's saying that I don't know what I'm doing. I've run three public companies successfully, NASDAQ, OTC, and also TSX. I'm not stupid. I But... I must be honest with you. I, as I said, I thought of it in the morning. I said, wait a minute, what if I just retract it? And that's what's happened. So the good news is OTC, Monday, Tuesday, upload. You'll be able to see all the data and such. Let me take it a step further for you. With OTC, all they needed was two years of filings of statements. I had those because... Of one year and 10 months or something to the effect was the administration, which was zero through the court that was administrated by Angela Collette. The other five, six months I do have because I'm the one that took it over. And all that it was is I put money in. No money has come into this company yet. I put in money in excess of $600,000. And you know what I built already, which we're going to get to in a second. So that's where I stand with OTC, with FINRA, end of story. There we go. Um, so through all of that, um, everything else is going exceptional. Um, I'm going to jump around a little bit, and I know I'm going to get some questions. Um, uh, with our NDA, with, the, with ANSYS that everybody's wondering about, the NDA is in place. We are in con contact with them on a regular basis, and we are half a foot away from everything being accomplished to where we want it to be accomplished. I can't say any more than that, but everything we feel extremely good about what's about to happen with that company, and that's as far as I can go. Um, I'm not somebody that dangles a carrot. I don't need to dangle the carrot. I know I'm speaking a little bit right now because I have a little bit of a family situation. So first of all, I apologize. But I don't dangle carrots because I don't need to dangle carrots. So when we talk about things, you know, and then some of you probably see me on Twitter. I feel like Donald Trump. I'm fighting back every <laughs> time on Twitter. But uh, I shouldn't be doing that. But I just can't take it sometimes. So anyway, that we're in good shape. Um, LT um, and his team which is, is a, a handful of people. Um, and and uh, I think two or three of, three of them are in <laughs> Seattle. Uh, we're opening up a location in Seattle, a large warehouse that I've just got all the leases. I just signed the documents for approval with a 5,000 square foot warehouse in just outside of Seattle. Um, his right-hand person, his name is Mike. I won't go into further names. Um, extremely brilliant person who has been on the calls and with our um, calls with uh, with answers um, uh, before we've signed everything uh, and he is toe-to-toe -to -toe with their engineers so I'm very proud that he's been brought on board and he's been with LT for quite a while um, LT's uh, location down in Surrey also would be opening up in September with another couple of engineers everything is moving as fast as possible um, you should be seeing some acknowledgements on patents and such, which I can't go into much further. But everything that you need to do is being done. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm just a little lost right now because I'm not using this as an excuse because I have an extreme family situation. I'm going to open it up. Um, I'm not sure. Again, I didn't prepare for it. I should have set it up where people put up their hands. You know how I am now. I take it as it comes. Um, and that's it. So let me, uh, first of all, uh, I think we, um, we muted everybody or can so one person, Bridget, can you say hi? No. So you're on a mute. So just one second. Oh, it's Steven, it's oh. Mark. oh you, I can hear you. Yeah. How are you doing, Mark? Oh, no, Bridget, you're mute. So can I, 
No, no, Bridget, I can't unmute you, so you can only unmute yourself. Yeah. So, if everybody can just be easy on me, I'm here. Fire away. So, Steve, it's Mark there calling. Hi, talking. Mark. And uh, we were just curious there about the notes and if that's all done now, or do you still have some that you aren't sure what's going on with that? Well, I've, I've answered this question quite a few times. And by the way, Mark, thank you for everything you do. Um, the, the, notes, the notes are the same notes. So they're all converted, but they haven't been exercised. They've been taking them piece by piece by piece by piece. That's what we thought. Uh, right. The, as far as the notes, there was only four. Um, and that's what's happened. And I, I'm again, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm at their mercy. They keep sending in pieces of the notes to convert for whatever reason. Uh, I, I'm not guessing. I am. So obviously they've been converted at the transfer agent, but they haven't been put into the market. And um, I'm going to take a wild guess, but I think I'm relatively close. I think well over 70 to 75 percent have already been traded completely through the market and have been bought by other people. There you go. Yeah. Is that all four of them, though? They're all in process. It's just trickling in. Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you there is no more notes. Perfect. Stephen. Yes. Um, so I'm sorry to have my family problems. I wanted to say thank you for what you're doing. Secondly, you. please don't go on social media too much. <laughs> Your age and it's probably similar to mine. I just don't bother with it. But can I? It's the same question probably I asked you last time. What do you think the final um, number of shares in issue is going to be? Well, I've done that calculation, and that's why I'm saying that they're just the notes haven't all trickled through, but they are converted. By the way, Max, a fellow Limey, I'm from Harrogate, Yorkshire, so there you go. We uh, spoke last time. Oh, we did. Sorry, there you go. Okay, there you go. Um, uh, I, I, we're, we're not. Uh, let's. You, let me give a round number. It's no more than 15 billion, and I think it's less than that. I think we're 70, 80 percent there. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, let me let me say this, and I've said it from the beginning. I don't have any thoughts of reversing or doing anything. We're building the company. I know I've said that over and over, but so, I'll, I'll, I'll go to my grave saying yeah. that. Sorry, go ahead, Max. The second, the second question I've got, because I don't go on social media, but I have gone on to the um, uh, Telegram, which is very good. People are very positive on there. And they mentioned share buyback, but... How would that work? I mean, normally share buyback in the UK is when companies have got loads of money and they, they buy back shares rather than paying a dividend. Okay. So the share back is pretty simple. It's like you and I sitting in my office and you say, I want to sell you my shares and I say, I want to buy them and I give you the money. So here's how it's going to work. Okay. On August 17th, I'm going to put online a, a buyback proposal and it'll be for a certain price. Whether I'm buying it or I have a group of investors close to me that I trust will buy it. I'm not sure it's still, as of today, I don't know how much I'm going to put the offer in max. I don't know whether it's 0 0.005. I don't know if it's one and a half pennies. I don't know. But I will know on the 16th because I'm announcing it on the 17th. And based on what's happening with the company, a lot of the stuff you somewhat know about, I could be offering two pennies. I don't know yet. It's going to be a fair price based upon the market at that yeah. time. Okay, but that doesn't touch, won't actually reduce number of shares an issue. It'll just transfer them to another holder. Um, yes, but I'm in discussions with those potential holders of putting the stock back into the uh, the treasury to reduce it, and then doing a future financing deal with them at a different price. So that's probably going to happen because I am all about reducing it. Right. That, that, that's pretty amazing. Thank you. Can I tell you why, Max? Yeah, yeah. We've got a great company. We've got all this stuff going on. That's why. What the hell is half a penny? That's my yeah. answer. Right. Thank you very much. You're very You're unusual. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, good evening, uh, Stephen. It's uh, Vijay here. Can you hear me? I can, Vijay. Thank you. I spoke to you the other day. I appreciate your call. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I uh, Thank you. Thanks for remembering. Uh, again, thank you. It is a great call. I just want to say thanks again and uh, take care. I mean, uh, we, we want you to be good. And uh, if everybody are okay, I would say that you can just drop the call and just go and check back with uh, Dunfly. Thanks again for your time. Well, thank you very much.
Braden. Yes, sir. I was just going to say the same thing. You know, we, we completely trust you and uh, know we're in good hands, but, you know, there's more important things. You need to go be with your son. So yeah. I, I think everybody should uh, let him go and uh, go be I'm with okay. his son. I'm okay for 10 minutes. I know what's going on. So let's just finish for 10 minutes. I don't, I don't, I, it's under control with my wife, to be honest with you. I don't want to get too personal, but uh, I'm okay for 10, 12 minutes. So please carry on a little. Can you, can you? I have a question. Oh, yes. Hi, Teddy. Hi, Teddy. Hi. How are you? Oh, my goodness. It's so nice to see you again. Thank you. Um, well, I've my never question seen is, you, but I've gotten your emails up. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks for everything that you've done for all of us. And we really appreciate your transparency. And it's been a really nice learning journey, too. I'm sorry about all the struggles you've been through, but it's actually helped educate us about the process by being so transparent. My question is, you have so many exciting things going on for this company. What, is there one that's like you're super excited about, that's really your baby, that you think might develop first? Well, see, here's my problem. If any of you know anything about me or read anything, and you know I have Crank Media, I'm an entertainment, music, television, and film guy. So I, don't, I didn't know anything about electric vehicles. And this came along, but the one thing I'm good at is educating myself really fast at the point in time, which is what I have done, and with LT and all the other things going on. I have some friends who are very close to top executives at Tesla. So I do have those. So I've reached out to those relationships. So um, I'm obviously extremely excited for Apogee. And, and, and when LT came to me, he was, he came to me simply with the powertrain and, and the capacitor. He didn't come to me with an electric car. I'm the one that said, let's put a car on top of it. I'm the one that came up with the Apogee D7, D meaning disruptives. And I put seven because believe it or not, seven's my lucky number. I've been very lucky with a seven in my business and my life. That's it. So I'm ex, you know, the record, everything I'm doing in crank media and the entertainment business and the NFTs even, which we can talk about a little bit more, that's a pretty a no-brainer for me. Apogee, I'm excited. When, I, when I've been on the conversations with the big Fortune 500 company that you all know who I'm talking about, it blows my mind. And for them to say, we're excited about you joining the team, that's what I'm excited about. Can I ask uh, you hi, hi, Stephen. Hi. Hi, uh, hi uh, Greg Koss. Again, I just hi, want Greg. to reiterate, hey, how you doing? And I, I just want to reiterate what everybody else is saying. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule with you know, the struggles your son is having. We're all thinking of them and, and really Thank appreciate you. the time. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, my question's about the – I'm always good for an NFT question. I'm kind of focused there, but – was wondering about as far as the Janice Joplin, the Marilyn Monroe, the Spice Girls, what's involved in getting the rights to put those NFTs up for auction from the estates? And can you see the possibility of repeat business uh, for, from those particular entities? Yeah, well, so that actually has been the easiest part for me. I've been in the entertainment business for 34 years. I have a lot of friends in William Morris and CAA ex uh, executives. Um, I've worked with some of the top artists from Earth, Wind & Fire to, um, to many, many pop rock artists and, and, and on and on. And I have a lot of relationships. That was one of my easiest jobs. What I did, and I think I explained this before, but I'll say it again. And we're now at about 115. But originally, we, I think I posted all of them. We had well, like 80, 90 domains. I simply went out and bought the domains with the, uh, with the thought, in my own thought, nobody else's, that I could get at least maybe 10, 20, 30% of them based upon my relationships. And, I've been, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So um, uh, right now, they're actually one-offs. So do I think there's going to be any future on Janis Joplin? Probably not. But I've got lots of domains that, that, that you know, some of them, absolutely. I have a very close relationships with the Spice Girls. Uh, you're from England, right? Actually from Maryland, U.S. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Then yeah. I took your accent. Okay. Anyway, the Spice <laughs> Girls, Mel, one of them is Mel B. And she's from Leeds, which is I was born and, and went to school like, eight miles from there. So I have a relationship with one of the big producers that brought in the, the early songs with the Spice Girls. So those are the relationships that I had. Right now, I'm working on one-offs. 
there you go. And and and, yeah. and and if you know anything about NFTs, which is a non fungible token, they could be a it could be anything. It could be an old video. Normally, there's two or three things attached to it. So it could be a painting, like Ronnie Wood, who I've known for many years with the Rolling Stones. If anybody knows about him, is a phenomenal artist, and his artist goes for ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars in the galleries. So he would do a painting, a little painting. Maybe he'd attach a song that has never been released before, and maybe he'd put. A, a pick from his guitar. Who knows? But you you can create your own non fungible token, and that's what that's what that's what we do. Yes. What yes. estimate would you put on getting for the NFTs? Out of interest. Sorry, Max, you're back. Okay, sorry. What estimate of sort of I, the I money have, price price? I I don't know, Max. It's like you and I standing at Sotheby's. We don't know. I, I guess they have a rough idea, but this is the young. This it is the unknown. It could be ten thousand. It could be five hundred thousand. There are some little uh, puzzles that a Japanese painter did, and 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 I think Origin Protocol were one of the people who distributed. I, I think it's over like one and a half million dollars. I would never pay anything close to from my life, but we don't know. And I think it is that that is the unknown. I'm not even sure how long the NFTs are going to last. <laughs> you know, they've been around actually for people don't know. They've been around for about five, six years and they've just come to light over the past 12 months. So I don't know how long this is going to last. So I'm taking a shot with it. So I, I don't have an answer. I don't know. Cool. Steven? Yes. Uh, thanks so much for this. Um, couple of questions. One, Medusa, what do you think potential is there? Hmm. Medusa. So when I when I um, I met with LT and we obviously discussed all the vehicle and we in the conversation he brought up something that he'd been working on. Ironically, for I want to say fifteen years or so, with a couple of other gentlemen, and somebody put in an extensive amount of money, and this is in the artificial intelligence, and um, um, uh, so. Finally, I went to him and said, listen, what if we did this? Because I, I, back in my dot-com days, I worked with AltaVista, like us, all the big search engines. So um, I think this is the unknown, and I'm not copying out here. I think this artificial intelligence, of which we are now developing other algorithm departments, metadata, which I think <coughs> is that one press release, and I'm predominantly doing it in the entertainment business now, uh, so I can know what theater you're going to, what popcorn you're buying, what, wh how long, how many miles it took you to get to the theater, all those things that this artificial intelligence Medusa is going to, is, is going to gather and then spew out in regards to you know what how they use it today and the data the data collection industry when i say data i mean people's algorithms and such is a massive business and we're taking it quite a few steps forward than that and lt brilliant man i i know people have you know tested me on this but i've seen it and walked with it and you know, I, I, I felt it, meaning everything I've discussed with him has come to fruition and everything that uh, uh, re regarding Apogee and, and now the Medusa. So it was somewhere that I wasn't thinking of going, but it's pretty unique what he's got. So I think you're going to be hearing something about that <laughs> in the next two weeks at most. Oh, well, that's awesome. Um, also with Apogee, do you... What do you see the future? Do you see a buyer looming someday or, or do you feel like that's something you'd keep in-house? So here's my deal. I'm the one that came up with Apogee. I'd love to make the car. I'm not that naive. I'm sure if we've got what we really do have, and I obviously feel we do, we're going to get bought out. I'm being honest with you. That's not to say I will, but they're going to come along. They're going to come along if this thing is real, which, again, it is. Um, so... You you will you will know one second after I know. So it's gonna be an interesting ride. Um, hey buddy. I'm the youngest uh, shareholder here. Um, on the release for the website the D seven, um, the pictures <coughs> of the car, is it a concept or is it just a random vehicle? It's a concept right now. We're working on concepts. You're probably going to see two or three concepts over the next month. Uh, and, and, one, and by the way, if I can make sense, Miguel, that's that Miguel, yes? 
Yeah. Um, it's, um, uh, and it's because when we start working with the company that we believe we will be working with, I think there's going to be quite a few changes simply because um, if you know anything what they do, they simulate it. And we can actually build that car without actually building it. You and I can drive it and feel the suspension and do all the different things. It's amazing. They do it for Bentley. They do it for BMW. They do it for airplanes. And uh, so who knows what changes are going to go. And I'm pretty sure there will be changes. As a matter of fact, you know what, Miguel, uh, I'm, I don't know if you, anybody knows, I'm downtown Vancouver. Directly across the street from me is a big showroom uh, that is now opening with the electric car called Lucid. And Lucid is the ex-CFO of Tesla. And they went through so many variations of it. I happened to see him the other day and he was visiting there because the showroom's actually not open yet. But so who knows, you know? Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Hey, Stephen. Yes. This is Tim. Uh, is uh, Do you expect uh, Apogee partner, Partners be revealed soon, the seven par partners? Yeah, I don't know where you read the seven. I guess it's on the website. I'm the one yes. that decided. I know that I said 10 partners in the beginning based upon my conversation, things I've got going on. I, I'm the one that decided I wanted to keep the seven. So that's my decision, first and foremost. Uh, you're going to be here within the next, at the most, 30 days, um, but definitely by the end of this month for sure. And if, let me just expand on that, what they are. They vary from, it could be the entertainment field where they're, the, the music system within the car, it could be the tires, it could be the, the metal or aluminum that the car is made of, it could be the leather on the roof, it could be anything, and that's those type of things. And there are companies that are disruptive within their own right, and in my right, but in with their own right. But definitely by the end of the month. Mr. Brown, I have Hello, a quick Mr. question. Brown. Yes. Um, my question is, have you thought about hiring like a graphic design artist to make a cool little video of the car kind of coming to life? We're like a concept video? Yeah, we, we are actually doing that now. And I have a great team here. I have, okay. I'll give you an example. If you've read anything about one of the board members, who's my friend of 35 years, Doug McGowan, uh, and then, yes. his, then his associate, who is Greg Strom, you can see them on the Crank <laughs> Media website, but they're on this board, well, one is a board member. So they are first uh, award-winning video commercial. They shoot Super Bowl commercials, two, three million dollars for 30 seconds, okay? They will be shooting my video for nothing. So I have those all lined up, ready to go. I'm not quite there, but we are absolutely doing that we're, we're actually videotaping stuff as we go along in the very early stages of graphic designs listen you got to know this and i'm not giving you a hard time you got to know it just it takes a lot of time to do all of this and it's been four and a half months i mean you know i, I listen I, rome wasn't built in a day so yeah. i'm going as fast as i can and if i hadn't had the hurdles that i've had i would be much further along but yeah. But the, the paperwork hurdles regarding um, the share, the stock, that those look like that's coming to an end, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, I can, and I can then finally get some sleep, but absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks for everything you've done and sticking through it. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Brown? Yes. Um, sorry, just a quick question. Um, is, this, um, is this technology and ANSYS, is this a patent basically based technology? No, ANSYS, ANSYS is their own technology. Well, to them it is, yes. We are. This is, this is my question. Is there any way that I can actually search about this patent? Uh, is, is this basically somewhere that we can search about it? Well, I think you're misunderstanding. We're, we're using their software to develop our own. So if you want to learn about ANSYS, you can go on right onto their <coughs> website and learn all about it. It's a massive company. Um, our, we are in the middle of developing ours. The minute that, that we have signed our contract, and I want to go any further, then we're going into full swing with our development, which will be our own proprietary uh, project. But their software is proprietary to them, not to us. And they pick and choose their partners who they want to use that software with. And they've chosen... I can't go any further on that. But anyway, yes, sure, you can go to answers. Thanks. Stephen, uh, people, hey, Max, uh, go ahead, Max. Can I ask you one last question? Have you done any advertising for these NFTs? We all know them about the shareholders, and it's on the website, but have you done advertising? 
Well, what happens is through Origin Protocol, it goes out to a, uh, a list, and they have a, they have their own list, and we will be sending our list out starting Monday. And I have a list of over fourteen thousand people it's going out to. Wow. I'm not wow. sure Origin. I know they have way more. Uh, again, anybody can go to Origin Protocol and read about their NFTs. They also do a lot of the token coin business, which I'm not involved in. Um, um, I just utilize their platform. <laughs> Stephen, people were asking in the room too about uh, uh, along the same lines about advertising for uh, Zippa prior to the launch September 1st. Are there any plans for that? Uh, there's some minor plans. Um, the one thing I know about, partly because of my son, but is the gaming industry, which I still involved in to some degree um yes and no um we're going to be launching it through social media which is instagram uh twitter all of those type of things we've got we're we're going to be uh, there's a video going up on twitch uh so let me let me i'm glad you brought that so that's my answer but let me explain to everybody and i've had this conversation a few times world gaming which i've had for a while is, is the tournament platform. We're building a platform with all different games, whether it be Fortnite, other games that we've gotten involved with. And, don't, and you will be able to, like my son does, go in, enter, play the game, win money. You can also win gamers cash, which we created. So if you get, if you get so much cash, you can get a PlayStation. Uh, if anybody has kids or anybody plays um, uh, games, games may be free, but once you get into the game, you can spend four, five hundred dollars because you got to buy the, a bigger sword, you got to buy a bigger gun, and all of that. And that costs real money. So you'll have your gamers cash, and you'll be able to buy those things. Uh, that world gaming, and I think I, it may have been not misled, but misread or miswritten, is is it, it put the two together? World gaming and the tournament platform is totally separate to Zippa. Zippa is TikTok for gamers. And that's what it is. It's an app and it's TikTok for gamers, which, by the way, there's more gamers in the world than there are everything else, because I know that. So that's what it is. I just wanted to separate the two. Mr. Brown, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Hi there. Uh, thank, thank you again sir. amongst everybody for, uh, for all what you're doing for us. Um, the, the technology that you guys are talking about with the drive train and whatnot, that it's a, a three foot by four foot by four foot trailer. Have you guys had any uh, idea of maybe implementing this into, let's say, like uh, trailers, uh, 18 wheelers, rigs and whatnot? So, so if you've ever met LT, which I know you haven't. So it, in LT's mind, it will be available for everything. It'll be built for boats, scooters, 18 wheelers and everything. Right now, we're building it for the automobile, um, uh, and 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 I've had conversations with LT about boats and scooters <laughs> and all those things. Obviously, in, in certain countries, scooters are everywhere, you know, and they got to fill up with gas and, and all that. And so, absolutely, that's in our in our uh, line of sight. Um, but first and foremost is the automobile. Okay, so in other words, it's not the the size. My my question was more to the sense that because it's it's a bigger unit to start out with right now. Would you like to implement it into something like a trailer? Yeah. Or at first? So, well, the, so the yeah. So the answer is absolutely yes. And the size, excuse the expression, does not have anything to do with it. Uh, it works whether it's fifty feet long or four feet long. Wow! And I've impressive. seen it with my own eyes. Okay, it's and not necessarily the crankshaft. Well, it is, but it's the elements attached to it, and then it ends up in a capacitator. And that's as far as I can say, not because I don't want to, but I'm not an engineer. Understood. Okay, but, so I can add, but I can add one plus one, and that's all it took for me to do it. It became two. There you go. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Brown. You're welcome. Hey, Stephen, I have a question with World Gaming. Yes, Anthony. Um, is there a possibility for accessibility to the high-end profile gamers with Games Cash? Like Absolutely. they could use their cash to try to play with gamers or talk with them? <clears throat> well, I haven't gotten to that point in regards to how you laid it out. But because of certain relationships, we will be bringing on board major league gamers that are 
as big as you can get. That's all I can say. I'm not sure if we're entering it the way that they're entering into the game platform the way that you said, but they will be associated with it, many of them based upon what we're planning on with the tournaments. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Hey, Stephen, I've got a question in regards to Medusa. Um, it, it, obviously, the, the potential applications for AI are vast. And I know that there's a lot of interest in the government space for AI and uh, just different uh, different use cases in, in government. Do you foresee from what you've seen of Medusa so far, and then even maybe taking into consideration LT's previous military background, you know, potentially down the road pursuing any sort of government contracts? So uh, the, the easy answer is yes, but let me tell you why. Not because I can just say yes. That was the first thing that LT started to talk to me about was how the military could use this. And, and, and he's actually got some things laid out on how we should approach them. But the easiest way and the most, the most um, best way because of the masses is to go to the building of the cars and stuff like that. Uh, so is it, is it, is it in the, uh, the line of sight? Absolutely. We got to build this damn thing first, and that's what we're doing. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm reading the book Ted's sitting on my desk right there, Tesla and everything. So, you know, again, it didn't happen in four and a half months. Uh, I don't get excited about a lot of stuff. I don't tell my wife that, by the way. But I don't get excited <laughs> about a lot of stuff. I'm excited about this. And I'm a record music guy, entertainment guy. I'm excited about Apogee. And I have brought in you know, every angle I can to this. And that's, this is just the beginning for this company. Well, you've got an equally uh, passionate investor base that's behind you every step of the way. So we appreciate all you're doing for us. And, now, and uh, let me talk about that, Sean, just quickly. So, you know, for, for every one knucklehead I get, I get 200 phenomenal. I've been involved in entertainment, uh, sorry, in, in, in the public arena in many areas, um, over the past 30 years, I'm 64 years old now. And I started when I was like 31, 32 years old. And, and with the dot-com world just before that. I mean, I was there when Mark Cuban did his thing. I remember when Mark Cuban could not buy a free sandwich in his little loft in Dallas, Texas. And he started, just before I started BitNet, he started broadcast.com. I've been through that. And and um, um, I'm extremely excited about what, what, what we're doing. Um, uh, that's why I'm putting my money in. People ask me why. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I got off track there, uh, for Sean. Um, th their response is just phenomenal with what what I've got. My 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 assistant goes into Tanya is her name. She goes into the info at cybernetics.com and she reads some of them and it's like it's like romance novels almost. I'm not joking. Some of them I dare not take to my wife to be honest with you. But it's 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 pretty amazing the support. So. Yeah. Well, we, we appreciate it. And uh, I think you've ruined a lot of sleep uh, of your investors because I, I can't stop just reading about your company and what you're building. Yeah, and uh, the, the excitement is there for sure. So guess what? If I'm not sleeping, neither are you, Sean. So there yep. you go. Well, thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Stephen. Yes, sir. Listen, I'm going. So it's 240. Am I okay to leave at 250? I mean, it's a little bit. But, so if, if 10 minutes. Go ahead. Quick EV question. Have you guys decided upon uh, for a production line, is this going to be based or is it leaning more towards uh, uh, a partner that's already ready to roll things off an assembly line? Uh, you know what? We're, we're talking about both. So I don't have a great answer. We're ta we are talking about both. Probably we're going to have to lean towards, uh, you know, an, another uh, assembly line because that's a pretty big challenge. So if I was to answer the question, I'm sure it's going to be that. And it would be possibly one that was mentioned in a tweet at some point. Say that again. Would it be possibly one that was uh, mentioned uh, indirectly in a tweet at some point? Uh, you'd have. Well, I'm not sure I did that. Tell me what I said. Why don't you just mention Mullen? And I know they've got two plants. Oh, I see. Uh, yes. Okay. Sorry, I didn't talk <laughs> about that. Uh, any anything's possible. I don't have any of those conversations going on yet. That's going to be relatively easy to do once we build what we what we've got. And by the way, there's a company that we are dealing with that has all those relationships. So, yeah. Here's one thing that we are strongly considering. And let me give you a little bit of insight because everything is going on in Canada. The Canadian government, so we can literally build everything in Canada. And I know I'm dealing with majority of Americans here, and I lived there for 37 years. Um. um the government are extremely 
friendly on, on, on supporting this financially and everything. So we are taking those elements into <laughs> consideration at this point. As far as manufacturing, that is. Um, can, you can you talk anything about the shareholder get-together in February? <laughs> sure. There'll be champagne and sandwiches <laughs> and, and, and a view of the harbor in Vancouver. What more do you need? Well, no, I was going to say we were talking about the, the video idea and you were talking about developing the video. Yeah. That might be um, a great time to present those videos. So like this is going to be easy hard. for me because I've done these type of things in the entertainment business. You're going to be surprised what what's happening there. We've got some, uh, some celebrities because of the NFTs. We've got some top engineering people from companies that you may be familiar with. Uh, I'm, it'll, be, it'll be pretty cool. Nice. Be very enlightening. And uh, by the way, there'll be snow still in the mountains as they put in the press release. <laughs> so we can go skiing after. Absolutely. And the great thing about Vancouver, it's only like you can go up to Cyprus, it's like 10 miles away, five miles away. Nice. Is there a one hotel everyone's staying at? Or no, are we no, no, no. I mean it's at the Pan Pacific, which is right on the ocean. It's where the it was where the cruise ships pull it pull in, which they haven't done for a while, obviously. They don't have yeah, but they I think they will be starting in March. Um, and no, there's tons of hotels around there. Okay. Uh, but, 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 but we are trying to put together a package for that. Um, and, and hopefully in the next 30 days, we'll have a lot more enlightening um, to that situation. Great. Okay. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Stephen, I have a question. Yes. Um, it's also regarding that conference. Um, is there any plans to have any part of that um, available to stream because um, there are going to be there already are a lot of travel restrictions. Yeah, I pushed I pushed it to February, and I I mean I would I probably maybe even should have done it in March. I don't know. I didn't want to push it too far back because it would look a little flaky. Excuse the expression. Um, uh, so the answer is yes. I'm absolutely going to stream it, and then the very least I'll videotape it and put it up the next day or the day after editing like complete film crew and everything so absolutely yes great thank you yes uh, just, just a question uh, in regards to uh i guess yeah february uh wondering is uh, you know um i'm sure you're gonna have um like you said lots of celebrities and it should be a lot of fun hopefully we can get a lot of people uh i personally will be there but i'm i'm in canada so i guess it's a lot easier uh <laughs> just a little, little drive over from ontario Okay. Yeah, I'm near Toronto, so it's not too far. Okay. No, I don't. Uh, I just, just how are you? Sm small flight. Not bad. How are you? Yes. Good. Thank you. <laughs> no, and uh, a very exciting times coming. Uh, just, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, Apogee, will we have any more? Um, obviously, by then, you know, we're talking months, but, you know, could we see something maybe a little bit more um, like the concept? Would it be somewhat more in place by then? Uh, obviously, we're talking February. Um, yeah, so the know, answer is, I, I believe, that I haven't talked to uh, LT about this, so I'm going to put him on the spot. So are we going to at least have the complete simulation from the company um, uh, that will be visual on all of the, uh, the monitors and everything, 100%? Will we have an actual powertrain sitting on the carpet? I don't know yet. Um, but you will we'll definitely have some form of a prototype, either physically or, or, or visually. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Hey, Stephen. Yes. Do you have a target number for the amount of outstanding shares you would like to see available after the buyout is completed? No. Um, say that again. Do I have... Like, like as you said, after the notes are all converted, you're, you're thinking it's going to be maybe around $15 billion. Uh, like, Hopefully a little bit less, but no more, yes. Sure. After the buyout, are you are you hoping for maybe $9 billion or 8 or do you have a number, or is that just kind of uh, wait and see sort of stuff? Yeah, $7 billion. It's my lucky number. I, you know what? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't do it for that reason. I mean, it's a good, it's a good question. I didn't do it for that reason. I'm doing it for the reason that's almost the same reason I did it. When remember when I dropped it from 200 billion to 60 billion, it was almost peer pressure to some degree. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, it was only a couple of months. I was in the company. I wanted to appease everybody. Now I'm getting serious about it. Um, um, I, uh, I want the least amount possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Here's, here's my dilemma. 
and it's relatively easy to find out, and that is this. With all of the press releases that are then coming out and all the things that are happening in this company, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking that a lot of people are not going to sell. So I've got to figure out the right price. You know, if you're, in, if you're in for like half a penny or two quarters of a penny, whatever the number is, and this thing is flying, who's going to sell if I come in at 0 .009? I'm not saying these are the numbers. I'm just giving you examples. It's going to be an interesting time. So, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're going to learn the same time I do. Almost. Thank you for answering the question. You're welcome. Steven, I got a question for you. Hi, Christopher. I uh, do you still have plans to do that name change further down the line. No, no, I'm not going to go. I don't need to No, I made a mistake. I made a mistake and I aggravated you guys because I just thought of it literally and said, wait a minute, let me just go back to HBIL. All the tree, all the different divisions don't change. So, uh, Apogee, NFT, whatever. So HP, it's HPIL. I got wrapped up in name, changing the name and the symbol. So I made a mistake, to be bluntly honest with you. And it came in my head one night, so I was frustrated. And look what happened. Here we are. 40 hours, 48 hours later, it's resolved. So I don't right now. No. I, what I think might happen, and a lot of you people are pretty savvy this, I think some of these companies are going to spin out. But, it, but I, it's not in my thought process right now. But, you know, we got some pretty exciting things going to happen and, and with this company. So who knows what happens? That's the great thing about this. Awesome. I appreciate it. And I agree the name change is pretty irrelevant at this point. Yeah, yeah. And I told you I made the mistake, but I fixed it. And I believe that that's cool, Stephen, because uh, there are a few folks in our group who already had their uh, number plate in their car as HPIL. It's flying oh, every no. That's not good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want that pressure. <laughs> uh, guys, we got two more, two more calls, please. Richard, you haven't said anything. You're smiling all the time. Oh, she must be on mute. You're on mute. Okay. Yes. Oh, there you go, Bridget. Okay. You must have one question. I'm, I'm I saw you smiling the whole time. I'm from, I know, I'm so, I'm so excited. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm really excited. It's the first time that I have, you know, a, a, a good amount of shares, I won't say, but a good amount of shares in a company and that I feel really, really good about it. And I'm losing sleep also. <laughs> I'm always watching, uh, you okay. know, always looking at myself. I'm in Montreal. I'm looking oh. for everything. Yeah. So yeah. I, have, I have a bit of an accent parce que je parle français plus. So I, I'm okay with English, but I'm, I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning so we, goal. yeah, with my record company over at Crank, we're quite involved in Montreal. Do you know Jonathan Waugh, who is Patrick Waugh's uh, son? You, you, if you're from Montreal, you must know Patrick Waugh, the great goaltender. So his son is Jonathan Waugh, and I own the life story rights to Joe Cocker. I know I'm getting off subject here, but once you get me talking about that. So I own the life story rights to Joe Cocker. We're making a movie. The script's finished called Unchained My Heart. And Jonathan, if you ever Google him or whatever, he looks like Joe Cocker in, in the 60s and 70s, and we're making the movie. And he's starring in it, and he's singing the whole soundtrack. And then we signed another cowboy who actually won La Voice, La Voice, Tommy Charles, a country artist, and uh, we signed him too. So we've got a few things going on in Montreal. Sorry for getting off the subject. But anyway, but thank you, Bridget. I really I, appreciate it. I haven't what watched uh, La, La Voix very much. Okay. But, okay. Uh, um, yeah, anyways, I'm, uh, I'm yeah, here, well, here to stay. Good. And, uh, thank you. Thank I you just for wanted to point out your smile, that's all. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, one more, one more. We're good? Come on, Max. You got one more question, surely. Uh, gosh, I have no. Um, I just want to wish you all the very best, really. And, uh, uh, thank nice, you. Uh, you know, yeah. what I, want I do to have one. Yes, go ahead. Hey, Stephen, this is Mark Frederick. We've exchanged a couple of years. Hey, Mark. Yes. I will, get, I will give you a call sometime, but I, no want problem. You to, I want you to do your thing. Thank you. Um, just want to say we're wishing your son the best. 
Thank you. And uh, I think it speaks volumes. Um, I don't think there's any other CEO that would have a family emergency that would stay on to talk to us. Yeah. And, uh, we, we just got you back. I wanted to let you know that. And then my one question is, um, saw the Mark Cuban Twitter follow. Do you have any relationship with him? I do. So as I just said before, I started vitnet.com, which anybody can Google my name. And, uh, and Mark Cuban was started broadcast.com and we became friends and he was, uh, living in a little loft, as I said, in Dallas, Texas. Now he owns the Dallas, um, uh, Mavericks. Um, and, uh, again, I think I bought, I paid for the coffee. He didn't have any money and the rest became history. And he, he built broadcast.com. I went on to VidNet. I didn't make anywhere near as much money as he did, but absolutely. Yeah. I've uh, done some other things with him since then in the entertainment. He owns a, a theater chain and many other things. And yeah, yeah, I do have a relationship with him. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, I'd like to thank everybody. I'm profusely very, very impressed with everybody for giving me the chance. I won't let you down, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you.